All right, and we are back. Um, ready for a castle stroll, everybody? You ready, Don? Uh, I need to recover after the seal incident. All right. Well, I Just think we ahead. might have to censor this one. So. Oh, castle stroll, a little bit of banging. I get you. Oh my. In the middle of the courtyard, there was a bench, shaded by elm trees. On it, two elves slept peacefully. Limbris was holding Ermin, and Ermin was lying against Limbris with a smile on her face, like she was having a good dream. Their sleeping faces looked quite happy. I better not wake them. So I turned around and quietly started to walk away. But my plan backfired. I was too careless in my retreat and stepped on a twig. Limbris blinked two or three times and then smiled at me. Sorry I woke you up. Don't worry about it. I was just dozing off. Ermin is sound asleep. Lemurs has woken up, but Ermin's still as fast asleep as ever. Yes, she was reading a book, so she got tired. A book? That's ah, true. Ermin was hugging a book close to her. I didn't expect Ermin to be in the habit of reading books. What was she reading? It's a picture book. A fairy tale. Oh? From an age long, long ago. The Adventure of the Hero of the Elves, the Black King. Hmm, I see. Wait, wait a second. You mean about me? Hmm, I wonder. Limus smiled as usual. I was getting curious. Clearing my throat, I shifted my glance towards the interior of the courtyard. Ah, uh, why not? May I take a look? Limus tilted her head like she was thinking, and she quickly smiled again. Why not? It's a picture book, after all. Limers took the book from Ermin's hands. Perhaps because she felt so secure in Limers' arms, Ermin didn't budge at all. I'm sure Ermin would be happy as well. Yeah. I took the book she presented to me, but I felt hesitant about opening it. I felt uncomfortable reading a fairy tale about myself. These are the things that I said, and I can't take them back now. Whether I read it or not, I prepared myself and opened the book to a random page. Huh? What's this? These pictures look like a child's scribbles. It's a fantastic picture book. But the illustrations do really do look just like a child's scribbling. <laughs> if you say that, you'll hurt Armin's feelings. I instantly understood her. <laughs> Time for a drink. Professionalism right there, folks. I instantly understood Limerick's words. Ah be that Herman is the author of this book? Yes. Before you returned, she said she wanted to communicate the truth. She had the enthusiasm of a historian. Is that so? Then in indifference to that enthusiasm, I should try to decipher it. Let's see, what do we have here? There are big letters scrawled underneath two figures holding a red stick and a black stick. His Majesty's sword is Edrum. It's a red, red sword. Quill's sword is Dunwin. It's a black, black sword. Pill's sword was given to him by his majesty. His majesty fights alongside the elves. He's really strong. He's a hero. Hmm. Now for the next page. Pill and his majesty walk forth, swords in hand. They beat the bad guys with a bang. Bang, bang, they beat them. Bang, bang, they beat them. Bang, bang, they beat them. And they, are these figures swinging the swords, Pill and I? Swords, Pill and me? And things that look like monsters are stretched out on the ground. Now the next page. Bang, bang, they beat them. Bang, 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 bang. It's the same picture as the last page. And on the next page, bang, 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 oh. bang, bang, bang. What's with this? Surely the number of pages represents the king's strength. Tell her to stop wasting paper. Jeez, what is she trying to write? Remember <laughs> suppress the laugh. It seems my feelings from reading the p picture book were showing on my face. Or my face with my palms. Uh, I've made quite the sullen face, haven't I? Yes, even more so than when you were facing the enemy army. <laughs> Limerus's shoulders sh shook as she tried not to laugh. I threw through the pages of Herman's book with a depressed expression. Bang, bang. It's still going. She's been in high spirits ever since you came back. Remembering that, she combed through Ermin's hair lovingly. She was really happy. Before I knew it, I'd stopped turning the pages. It's because you're a legend. A gentle breeze blew through the courtyard. The 
trees and shrubberies swayed softly, waiting for the rustling to die down. I opened my mouth. I was supposed to sleep a bit longer, though. I finally found somewhere quiet to stay. I was happy, too. Hearing Loomis's quiet tone, I couldn't finish what I was saying. I was raised hearing stories about you, just like Armin, after all. The warm breeze still blew. It twirled slowly around the courtyard, distributing its warmth and disappeared. The sunshine was warm, and I felt like the happy times long ago must have resembled this. I gently returned the book to its place. Perhaps I hadn't been gentle enough, though. Uh, uh. Half awake, Armin smiled a little, then fell back to sleep. She must be having a good dream. It seems so. It's my wish that these good nature elves can be happy, and that these peaceful times may continue. Aaron, you mustn't snitch food. Shit, that was, that was you. Oh, you must snitch food! Just in your sleep. Wait, yeah. I can't just overlook that. <sighs> so, is the blue haired chick a new fighter? Or is she just more help around the castle? She's a mage. <laughs> Gotcha. Yep, with a spear. Water magic! How did you know? Seal, seal, motherfucker! <laughs> Alright, I think? Castle Stroll? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this looks familiar. As I rest in the shade of the trees after you came before I knew it. Fortunately, the meals Limerus makes are still tasty cold. There's no problem. The only things that are. They're the only thing to worry about whether there's any left. Yep. Yep. Gonna need to censor this. Um, Wait. I'm gonna take a, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just put my logo over the screen, guys. That way YouTube doesn't yell at me. So I'll do all the text. But, yeah. We are gonna have to censor this part, I think. While heading to the dining hall, I spotted someone next to the spring. It looked like Lilir. She noticed me, but for some reason, she seemed kind of downcast. Is lunchtime already over? Cricket. <laughs> Maybe I said something bad. She sank into silence. S That's you. S sorry. Suddenly, she apologized. Cricket. Cricket. She didn't say anything more. What's wrong? Um. I. Truth is. Cricket. You won't get angry? I won't get angry. Well, that depends on the situation. Eh. She was clearly panicked. I, um, mm, 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 do I have to say? Say it. She was the one who originally brought it up, after all. Um. Just say it. As long as it's not something major, I won't get angry. Major? That's location. right, for instance. For instance. Oh crap. Like, like you're, that you're still hiding the fact that you wet the bed. No, 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 no. That's not it. Oh, then what is it? Ah, uh, cricket. We were still caught in a loop. When she finally got tired of going back and forth, a little looked down and opened her mouth again. It's about lunch. She stopped speaking there, and it seems that the reason she made such a speechless face when I mentioned lunch was that it was the root of the problem. After having stalled for a moment, she glanced at me in intermittently and continued speaking. I, I burned the soup. What? You just messed up at cooking? It doesn't matter. You just burned it a little. Give it a nice smell. It could be good in its own right. Cricket! Cricket! Her ominous silence continued. I'll just ask in case, but just how burnt was it? Can I get? Can I get? Uh, can I get? Can I get? Can I get? Can spit I get, it out, and I won't get angry. All of it. All of it. Hey, Ron, you said you wouldn't get angry. No, I'm not mad, but all of it. It's true that I burned it, but there was still half of it left. But Ermin spilled it, and then she disappeared. And she left you behind at the scene. Yeah. Somehow I got an idea of what the situation was, but it's irritating that Lily was left to take all the blame. But why were you helping with today's cooking? 
When I asked, Lulu bashfully turned her gaze to her feet. As your wife, I wanted to help the housework. She says that there's no way I can scold her. Uh, not that I intended to from the start. What? It's no big deal if one meal is missing. As long as we've got bread, we can fill our stomachs, right? I put the bread rather, too. Rather, it'll make dinner taste even better. Cricket. <laughs> Cricket. Is there something else? She averted her eyes and didn't answer. A terrible premonition ran through my mind. <laughs> Could it be the bread too? It's burned black. I, I really have yeah. a <laughs> With Ermin gone, it seems that Miss Munch is un unavoidable. Oh, thank God. All right. I can make bread. I can't. I, 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 I'm. I'm terrible at it. <coughs> All right. So we get to depart again and go to uh, Sylvanus, an ancient wood rich with the blessings of the forest. See, there she is. I love the hat. The hat's great. <laughs> it's a seal felt. Yeah, what's left of it? Huh? Hey. What's wrong, Uller? I feel like there's an elf around here. Hmm. Mm. Elves did live in this forest long ago, after all. There may be someone whom we could call out here. Hey, you! We're calling you out! <laughs> there are elves living in this place. It's a story of the distant past. There shouldn't be any left now. The elves' numbers have decreased, and the surface has become contaminated. So this forest has become a harsh place to live. Contaminated? Even though it's such a beautiful forest. You probably wouldn't know, but... An invisible miasma called Gravitas, Gravitas has contaminated this world. It's quite a terrible place. It shortens the lifespan of elves and old beings like us, causing us infertility. While on the other hand, oh, okay, so Elrond can just ban bang everybody and have no, have no problems. I well, missed this line on my playthrough. <laughs> what? I missed this line during my playthrough. I don't know how. Old beings like us causes infertility. While the other, well, on the other hand, turn turns heart earnless creatures into brutal monsters. Huh? Then we should... Look at the bones. Look at the bones, they're gigantic! It's just a bunny. Just a bunny? It's got sharp, vicious teeth! <laughs> you humans don't need to worry, even though there's brutal monsters everywhere. This, is re this was originally targeted at an older species. So it's a weapon? Of course, you'll be affected a little, but... Humans are short-lived already, so your lifespan shouldn't be shortened. And you were tenaciously quick to multiply from the start, so there's no problem. He's and just, he's like, released. smiling. He's like, oh, you're fine. <laughs> and you were released from those people's constraints, so... Those people's constraints? Look at her face. She's like, what? And Ogre was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, it, it really isn't my imagination. I think there's someone nearby. Nearby? Yes, yeah, so I'm not the only one talking to myself. It's true that compared to 1,000 years ago, the gravitas has thinned out. But this place isn't really suited for living. Well, they might be staying hidden deeper in the forest where the gravitas couldn't reach. Um, not in the forest. It's in that spring over there. Eh? Huh? The spring? <laughs> A water elf? I don't know that much, but... There's one in the spring, then. Elf son. Elf! Come out, elf! Ribbit. Ribbit. That, that's Ribbit. literally what just happened. Those frogs have, like, Tyrannosaurus jaws! Oh my god! <laughs> Tyrannofrogus Rex! Could be that your fellow elves are frogs? No! Those are Ehuska. Frogs. Frogs. Waterside monsters born from the effect of gravitas. I knew it! They're Open, monster frogs. We should probably investigate this. Monster frogs, yes. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, Arthur. I'm sorry, what? Borgs came out. Come, Come out. out. Borgs, we're going to eat you. Cricket. 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 He comes up and just smacks them both in the back of the head. I think what he did. Do you already feeling for hunting? Listen to the conversation a bit. Listen, we're going. The situation is changing from minute to minute. Going where? The spring. Look, there's some strange things there. See? Look, the frogs. What are those? What the fuck? Frog monsters? Yes, I agree. They don't look very edible. I agree with that. Pores are way more delicious than frogs. Look at her expression. She's just like, no. I want boar, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being fixated on food. Anyway, we're assaulting the spring. Let's go. We're gonna jump on the lily pads from, from lily pad to lily pad. Take your frog to frog. And right. we will sing, sing, sing. So we are definitely coming up on a scene. Alright, so how should we be laid out here? Alright, we need... Oh, we can use everybody. Yep. Atroporos leads the charge with Aron and Arthur, and everybody else just hangs out in the back. So Atroporos, Aron, and Arthur are with him. <coughs> Let's put Lilia over here. Morgan, you go there. Ogum, you go back with Rhiannon. Actually, switch uh, Atroporos and Arthur, because, Ar because Atroporos has a bigger range. Okie doke. Strategizing with Don and Numa. Maybe they're weak to water, because, you know, frogs. Everybody uses your judgment. Except Iran. Iran, you are going to attack Natchaporos. Eh, I'll leave it to you. Oh, she's got a spear. Yeah, Natchaporos has a buddy. I think she's melee. Well, melee and magic. She's like Iran. And then you just Ogum fire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, we can stand on the freaking lily pads. Yep. I gotta say, these things aren't really posing a fight. That, that's ice. We have Arthur. 400 damage. Arthur's level 13. But he did more damage than an Ogum. <laughs> and Ogums are mage. Hold on. Fire dry man. You eat, you eat. out magic. <laughs> it takes Ogum a while to cast his shit. Holy right. shit. When, when did he get all this? I don't know. Holy crap, Ogum, your range is amazing. Well, I can't just like, hit the last frog. Listen, there's one more frog after. Oh, it's purple. Alright, Ogum. You're going to go over here. And then we're going to have you attack this purple thing with your magic. Because you're amazing. Nuke it. Well, there's not that bad either. You just owe him. Guys, move. I got this. Nuke it. You can attack. Explosions. Nope. Can't you can't quite make it. <laughs> Poor Ogum. Can't get past level eleven. I like Magic. Atroporos is my favorite character. Alright. We're gonna bomb it. Atroporos is, it is your favorite character? Yeah. Oh god, that thing knows magic! Nuke it! You just hit a Ron, Ogum. Thank you, Rhiannon. 
And you get Atroporos he healing the Leer. Yeah. Go Atroporos. And there's a Ron. Morgan's hanging out in the back somewhere. Where did she go? Oh god! Trees! <laughs> Run away, damn it! We got a bronze helmet. Trees. <laughs> All right, Iran. You have a bronze helmet. What? What do you? Chris is agility. Uh, she doesn't have any equipment. Um, what is her main skills? Water. She's the same as Atroporos. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So, do we want to give her... Um, her magic's higher than her regular attack. Her magic is higher than her regular attack, so we want to make... Well, hold on. She's a, she's a mage. She's a mage. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna do that. Do you want to uh, give her like a helmet or something? Make it so that she can, you know, take hits. Feathered hat. She's got quite a few hit points. I mean, in comparison to people like Aron and Arthur, not really. But Atroporos, she beats the crap out of. Well, he, well, he's not wearing a bronze helmet. <laughs> She does. Give her what, just give her what's left. Nah, we'll, we'll have to make a, a trip to the shop for her. But we get to save here. And continue. Cutscene! Why was it purple? What a pretty place. A field of flowers, mushrooms, and apple tree. It's so small and cute. The air is really fresh, and the flowers smell good. Hmm, I can definitely smell it. It smells of elf. There's a fairy ring, too. Yeah. It's elf hiding place, after all. Hey, Arthur. What? Excuse me. Smack that apple tree a bit. If you want apples, there's plenty when we go back to Avalon. I don't really want the fruit or anything. Just go smack it. What I want is the bug stuck in that tree. Huh? You want these bugs? No, no. Well, whatever. Oh, crap. Well, whatever. Knocking, knocking napping beetles out of the trees is my specialty when I was a kid. You just got real quiet. Watch this! Ah, my ears! I watched it land on his head. Oh, hey! Whack! Hey, look! You want this? Just as I said. Oh fucking no! Well, what's what's this? Oh, oh I'll t I'll take this one. Ouchie! What on earth happened? After I finally got to sleep too. What a big bug! Is it edible? What the fuck? Of course not, you moron! Oh. Ah, humans! I'm not tasty. Please spare me. If you eat meat, nothing will happen. Your lifespan won't increase and your magic power won't increase either. So, so if you'll please just spare me my life. To spare or not, what should we do? Macbeth, anyone? To spare or not to spare? To spare or to nom? <clears throat> that is the question. I'm an elf, Rafty. Hey, it's really convenient to have an elf in your household. Tell you the truth, even if I don't look like it, I'm a minor elf. I'm really good at metalworking, so if you guys have a pot with a hole in it or a dull knife, I can make it as good as new. Drawn elves are amazing. What about them? The wife there. Eh? Huh? I mean you. You're talking about me? You seem like a new bride. <laughs> you can tell? How about it? Surely you have one or two such pots at your house. Well, that's true. There are plenty back at the castle. You can rest easy now, ma'am. 
Your black clad husband seems that he has a bit of a bad temper, but will make you sparkling new pot. And you can make a piping hot dinner. And just like that, he'll smile and get all lovey dovey. Oh my god, do not put ideas in her head. <laughs> what should we do? Dear. Ah! Laurent just clobbered her. Ow! Hey, you two. A wife who's managing the household shouldn't take in someone so quickly. Yeah, you're right. You too. Don't suddenly you get all servile towards a human. You're one of the minor elves who has exceptional strength and skill among all elves. And you're going to mend pots? Temper swords, forge chain mail. Damn it, you're a grown man, then have... If you're a grown man, then have some shame. Um, that's even if you say that, I'm... I'm... Um... This is a child. Well, no, this isn't fine to leave it as is. This kid is still young. But if we don't have beat some character into him, now, now, just leave it to this old man for today. Or, uh, could it be here, the great sage Ogum? When I was small. I happened to see you once. Indeed. Harumph. In that case, and the black-clad gentleman next to you is. Uh, it's a run. Ah, forgive my rudeness. More importantly, you're coming with me now. I'll beat a real man's lifestyle into you. Is that really, Is that okay? really okay? It's an order. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ah, don't cling to me. <laughs> what are you doing? How unusually happy. <laughs> Somehow I just felt a prickle. Why, I wonder. Eh, mm, eh, mm. And I'll make a man out of you. <laughs> Hold on a sec, everybody. 